According to Stephen F. Corfi for the USA National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, a derecho is a widespread, long-lived windstorm. Derechos are associated with bands of rapidly moving showers or thunderstorms. Although a derecho can produce destruction similar to that of a tornado, the damage typically occurs in one direction along a relatively straight path. The definition of the swathe of wind damage extends at least 650 kilometers is at least 100 kilometers wide, includes wind gusts of at least 93 kilometers an hour along most of its length, and also includes several well-separated 120 kilometer per hour or greater gusts. That event can be classified as a derecho. In the storm that tore through Ontario and Quebec on May 21, 2022, seems to have classic derecho features. With stronger derechos, winds may exceed 120 to 130 kilometers per hour. This storm in Ottawa, Canada, reached 118 miles per hour or 190 kilometers per hour. The winds associated with derechos are not constant and may vary considerably along the derecho path. Downbursts often occur in irregularly arranged clusters along with embedded microbursts and burst swaths. Derechos might be said to be made up of families of downburst clusters. So whatever happened in my neighborhood was pretty directed. You can see how it carved through the woods behind my house before exploding across the street, tearing roofs off of houses and downing trees. Because derechos are most common in the warm season, those involved in outdoor activities are especially at risk. Campers or hikers in forested areas are vulnerable to being injured or killed by falling trees, and those on the water risk injury or drowning from storm winds and high waves that can overturn boats. And indeed, many of the dozen or so fatalities caused by this storm happened to people caught on golf courses and campgrounds or in a boat in one case. Occupants of cars and trucks also are vulnerable to falling trees and utility poles. High profile vehicles such as semi tractor trailers, buses and sports utility vehicles may be blown over. At outside events such as fairs and festivals, people may be killed or injured by collapsing tents and flying debris. Even those indoors may be at risk for death or injury during derechos. Mobile homes in particular may be overturned or destroyed while barns and similar buildings can collapse. People inside homes, businesses and schools are sometimes victims of falling trees and branches that crash through the walls and roofs. They may also be injured by flying glass from broken windows. Finally, structural damage to the building itself, for example, removal of the roof, can pose danger to those within and without. And what Mr. Corfi describes sounds exactly like what happened in Ottawa, minus the mass casualties, thankfully. Typically, derecho producing storm systems move at speeds 90 kilometers or greater for Someone caught outside such a rapid movement means that darkening skies and other visual cues that serve to alert one to the impending danger may appear on short notice. In summary, the advance notice given by a dread show often is not sufficient for one to take protective action. Whether in an urban or rural area, those out of doors are at a greater risk of being killed or injured in a dread show but of particular significance in urban areas is the vulnerability of electrical lines to high winds and falling trees. And we saw that happen all over the Ottawa region, knocking out power and communications for a week in some places. It is the complex and dense concentration of overhead distribution feeders in urban areas and their frequent proximity to large trees that make cities especially vulnerable to electrical outages following windstorms. Pole lines often carry multiple circuits and voltages, as well as lines for street lighting and customer services connections that further add to their vulnerability.
Because of this, and because urban electrical feeders typically serve smaller territories relative to their rural counterparts, significantly greater manpower is necessary to restore services after major storms. In addition, unlike the localized damage produced by a tornado, derecho damage may be widespread. As a result, repairs often require greater effort with additional delays related to shortages in supplies. There's also evidence to suggest that the impact posed by direct shows has increased in recent years, in part to the maturation of shade trees planted in suburban areas in the 1950s and 60s. The vast tracts of post-war suburbs with their overhead utility lines and older trees are especially vulnerable to damage from high winds of any source. The occurrence of tornadoes with Derecho producing convective systems reflects the fact that both tornadoes and strong convection wind gusts share, to some extent, common origins in the background atmospheric environment. And there was anecdotal evidence of funnel clouds around the Ottawa area during the storm. There's nothing to suggest that a warmer world necessarily would favor stronger derechos. What can be said with greater certainty about derechos and climate change is that the corridors of maximum derecho frequency likely would shift poleward with time. So that's great. Perhaps we in the northern latitudes will experience more of these freak weather events as the planet warms. It's worth it to stay prepared with three or four days of supplies and maybe a generator. So stay safe. Watch for your notifications and take them seriously.